We'll call this meeting of the New Falls City Council to order, please, and I appreciate all the folks that are here, administration, and my fellow councilmen. <clears throat> With that, Mrs. Werner. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Gorin is absent. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shani. Here. Councilwoman Ray. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And the Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Six members present. And we will have the invocation by Chief Trustee. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. We pray that you be in this meeting, that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we need action on the minutes of 1220. Still in. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comment? If not, Mrs. Burr. Okay. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Stay, was in here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. With that, then I need a motion for the minutes of 304. So moved. Second. Eggleston and Shammy. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good to go? Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. <coughs> With that, I need a motion to break rules of council to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Did you get a second? Yeah. And the breaking rules of council to go into executive session right. to discuss. This public employee. Yeah, to discuss the public employee. Discipline of a public employee. Discipline of a public employee. Got it. And second was Shami. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chan? Yes. This is 6 0. And with that, we will ask you all to please step out for a short period of time. This should be a fairly Mr. short Mayor, so don't go Mr. Far. Mayor, we have not made a motion and a second to go into executive session. Excuse we me. only did it to break rules of council. Do I have such a motion? Second. Executive session. Second. Second. You're going to the executive session to discuss employment, the, to discuss discipline of a public employee. Yes. All right. So motion to move to executive session to discuss public employee. The first was Eggleston. Right, this is the second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor <clears throat> Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. That's the six zero. Yeah, cool. I move to go back in the regular session. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. I heard a motion. Ready. Second. Uh, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleton. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Are there any communications? If not, we'll move on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members with public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report uh, for the month of February. We'll start off with our service report with our assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, under the Public Works Department, um, there's really no new update other than we are still, uh, we just ordered uh, some flowers and stuff for our streetscapes and parks. Uh, up here on Smith Boulevard, as you see, probably some of the grass got cut away. Uh, we're going to improve that boulevard as well in this year's um, task. And then hopefully at next report, uh, knock on wood, we can start, you know, get our snow and ice removal taken off and be good to go to start spring. Um, under the lead surf, under the water department for lead service and water main replacement project, uh, the surveying um, we think is pretty about 95% complete. Uh, the water crews had to do a little bit of testing to, to see some some old connections that may or may not have uh, have happened. So um, hopefully by fall we'll have the design done and, and keep on moving with that project. Um, sewer department, we're just performing some general maintenance um, under plan expansion study. Uh, the study is complete. Uh, we, myself, uh, Mr. Bridge, and then our wastewater superintendent, Kerry, uh, May, uh, we're going to have a meeting on 326 to go over that review and we will approach council with, with that study. Under 2023 road reconstruction resurfacing projects, I am currently going over uh, some of the roads like uh, West Washington, um, Orth, Villa, Henry to see how much we can get done, how many ADA ramps we're going to get put in. Uh, right now the county is looking to open the bids up around mid-April, so we should know something soon about how much we're going to uh, be able to do. Um, we are also looking at some striping, uh, refresh our yellow, double yellows on Smith, um, Jefferson, Lake, uh, get those touched up. And then on to um, Fenwick Drive, this next week should be completing those manhole adjustments. I was just in contact with the contractor late last week. And then under the uh, gazebos, um, we are looking, uh, we've gotten some concrete pricing, we've gotten some gazebos. I am still looking at some alternate types of gazebos to uh, put down at the pool um, to see what might best uh, fit us and stay within our budget. And then under additional items, uh, you do have a paving ordinance is in front for introduction tonight to pave Heritage Hall parking lot and Hensley Park parking lot. Um, I have completed the final review of Monroe Meadows and Reserve at Honey Creek Development Construction Plans. And that is all I have on my report with updates. I can entertain any questions on it or anything else that has come to mind. Anyone? Go ahead, Peg. Is there anything in the works on repaving or doing something to Orth? There's a possibility. The Orth is just along with Villa and all of them to see how much I can do. and. A lot of this comes down to um, you know, how many ADA ramps I got to do with these projects. Um, for instance, uh, West Washington is about 58,000 just to pave, but as soon as I, or I'm sorry, 50, I have the number wrong, it's 50 something, but I'm almost, I got to do two ADA ramps, which bumps in another 14,000. So each ADA ramp, 7,000. Um, I've already priced um, Villa, and Villa was one. 111 I think just to pave it and then it was a 148 to add the appropriate ADA ramps So it, it, it you know choose it into some of that and then we are doing about I think it's gonna be eight ADA ramps in the Willowick spinning area uh, to catch up on those 19 Anyone else? Go ahead Kat. Yeah, um, you mentioned a few streets to get the yellow lines repainted we seem to have a lot of yellow lines that are faded. Is there some way we could get a lot of them or all of them done? Well, those are the only ones we have that are double yellow. Um, Smith, Lake, we are not going to do clay. Oh, you're talking the interior light. I was talking curbs. I'm oh, cur curb will be hit. We got a new machine this, this past okay. uh, fall, so there'll be a lot more curb work going on. That would be awesome. Um, the, sweeper, the sweeper will be in sometime in June, so we'll end up doing that city or we'll be doing pothole repair prior with Durapatcher. Then we'll go through and do a full city-wide sweep, 
and then um, we'll go ahead and then hit those curbs. But yeah, this was double yellow to put that on the county yeah, project. I didn't understand that. I also wanted to mention some of the signs. It seems like we're getting more signs on our telephone poles. Have you noticed that? No, more signs that are Just what? Like, I don't know, like this is for sale and this is, you know, whatever. I don't know. I've seen a furniture sign and I, I saw another sign. I forget what it even said now. Are they ones that you see that are stapled or whatever up yeah, on just wood telephone poles? Pole. We try to hit them. I know um, I'll talk to Brian because, uh, you know, we got a code enforcement guy or gal coming here soon to do that. and typically when they're out they're just yanking those things down Good. sometimes my guys get them if i see one i'll grab it but Good. yeah we're starting to see a lot uh yeah, it pick up right now the show okay anyone else thank you mr kiko and moving on to the fire and ems report our fire chief chief uh, chief steve trusty <laughs> mayor council citizens for the month of February, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 102 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to 10 fire-related calls, four good intent calls, and one false alarm. We had three EMS calls answered by Pike Township about the park due to Medic 52 being in response. We answered two mutual aid calls to Pike Township and three mutual aid calls to Bethel Park. Uh, at the time of this report, we were at runs, run number 309. We are now at run number 333. Uh, we are working on an action plan for the division for the Eclipse Day on April the 8th. When we have it completed, we will send it to Mr. Bridge and Mr. Kitko for their review. Uh, we still have smoke alarms at station, free for our citizens. All they need to do is call the station or come by. Any questions for Mr. Okay, moving on to the city manager report. Our planning and zoning in court. I'll uh, read a little bit. This time of year, Brian has been doing some desk work, get caught up with some policy I need him to work on, and also get some certifications to the Ohio State. Uh, but it looks like we've got 10 total uh, violations for properties, uh, 2.5 average uh, violations per property, and nine closed violations. We also have the uh, latest mayor's court report in there as well. So, any questions on that before I move on to the uh, police department stats? For the police department, uh, 294 calls taken, 49 reports, 65 assists, 13 criminal arrests, 3 felony arrests, 2 minor misdemeanors, 8 warrants, 39 traffic stops, 26 traffic warnings, 13 uh, moving violations, 1,976 business checks, 14 code enforcement follow-ups, 10 traffic crashes, and 11 parking citations. And note, uh, we have Deputy Zach Speckman. He will be taking a new job with Miami Township Police Department. Deputy Spe Speckman, the last day of work will be March 6th. We wish Deputy, Spe Deputy Speckman nothing but the best in his new position. And uh, we do have a new visitor here today. Uh, Deputy Dylan Dar 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 Derringer will be uh, Speckman's replacement. Um, so. Welcome, Mr. Derringer. Welcome to the new Carlisle Rural Patrol Division, sir. Thank you. I hear it's one of the best places to work in the county. That's just what I heard. They lied to him a lot, too. <laughs> Any questions for the planning or police department report? No? And then since Ms. Harris is here this evening, she can give her finest, direct, finest report, if you don't mind, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public here tonight. This is our February finance report. Our revenue that we took in is $1,201,090.92. Our expenditures are $1,113,519.47. This um, calendar month for February is a lot larger than normal due to our annual transfers that get posted in February. Then the statement of cash, our beginning balance is $8,114,991.22 at the beginning of the year and currently at the end of February we have six million seven hundred nine hundred and seven thousand five hundred forty dollars and seventy seven cents the rest of the differences in encumbrances which are open purchase orders that we haven't spent yet but are obligated to spend the all the bank accounts are balanced and then going into the next report is our monthly net income tax collection and for CCA's collection for the month of February, we are up $14,069.62 from this time last year. 
which they have collected $195,516.18. The next report is our mayor's court, and for the month of February, they took in between fines and court costs $2,738 for a total year to date of $6,668. The other reports are attached, and I'd entertain any questions. Any questions? I'd just make a comment if I could. Um, I just wanted people to know that we do donate and remit to the computer fund, the court sec security fund, just different things that I was kind of surprised to know about and I thought maybe other people didn't know about that. The child safety seat fund, things like that. So the court costs aren't just a big cash haul for us. We actually do donate plus pay for our people. So I just kind of wanted people to know that. to accept the finance report. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Ray? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. <coughs> Move to accept the mayor's court report. Second. <clears throat> Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Accepted 6-0. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving on to the city manager report under informational items. Uh, I'm going to bounce around. I got two bullet points that we're going to require some discussion. I'm, I'm going to do last so I can get through this, uh, the other parts first. Um, ordinance 2024 07. I asked for, requested that to be tabled last meeting. I'm going to request that to be tabled again. We're still waiting to hear back from the insurance companies regarding this language. Um, so, again, until we have that worked out, we're still operating off our current contract, so we're not at loss for anything. But until we, again, we get that contract language both, uh, that both parties agree, agree upon and comfortable with, then we can vote on it. Um, moving on down to utility company rights. I've been talking with Councilwoman Wright regarding this. And Councilwoman Wright, please forgive me. I did want to have some things for you today, but I have some other issues that That's kind of fine. sidetracked me. I am working on it. So I'll have some information regarding what basically utility companies can and cannot do. Basically, long story short, they have access to just about anything they can through easements and stuff like that. So um, but Beaver Creek does a good job on their website of explaining it. So I'm going to see if we can kind of do something like that as well. Mm -hmm. they do. So we can at least point our citizens in the direction. Uh, Monroe's uh, Metals, uh, Mr. Kiko had mentioned he approved the uh, phase one constructions. So that does go to the planning board on March 26th and we followed up with city council on either the first meeting in April or the second. I just want to stress this is going to be a formality meeting. Um, it's in our codes that they had to come in for the design, the lot sizes, the et cetera, where the roads are going to be. And we've already done that. We got, that's the hard part. Now it's basically have they, have they built it to or use it, use it they done it to the standards of our codes and Mr. Kiko has reviewed that. So really this is a formal place when to go in there. Meetings should not take long. We're not there to discuss lots need to be this size or setbacks or that. That's just already been established. Again, to, re to reiterate, it's just a formality um, to make sure that they've done the correct steps through the particular codes for the construction cases. And McDonald's, I did get a call last week um, from the franchise owner from his office. Um, they were interested in coming and doing and some things in the community and giving back to the community. So once I hear back from them, I'm going to be setting them up with Paula Crew to get them into the schools and then try to see what they, what they can do for us inside the city limits as well. But it's just a great to hear from a, a franchisee. They have not even broke ground yet and he's wanting to know how he can be involved in this community. So I've done some Google research on this particular family. They are about 27 McDonald's and they are involved in just about any other community they are in. So we have got one of the better franchisees. So we do appreciate that. Once I make that contact, I'll update I'll, 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 I'll counsel at a, at a meeting. Um, <laughs> headshots for certain city council members. I need to get Mrs. Wright and Mrs. Shammy in for headshots. Um, they're done by Andy Grimm. No. <laughs> so, so I'm assuming Mr. Shammy works in the evening. Are you, do you have, I mean, in the day, do you have any availability at like sure. five or six to come in if I can schedule that out? I'm open. I'm okay. retired. Do you have a specific day of the week that works better for you or not? What, what day did you say? I'm open. It doesn't uh, matter. Monday. 
Monday they're good. Fine. Okay, sounds good. I'll go ahead and get that scheduled and let you guys know. Sure. Evans Lands Auction, I do believe that is coming up on the 27th. Uh, I will be attending with uh, some council members. I think Ms. Eggleston's going, and also to Brian, our planning director. We got some uh, quite a bit of land outside the city limits. See, see who bids on it, if anyone, and then kind of get a little heads up of who maybe will be our new neighbors. Clark County, uh, March 1 tour public health date that is attached. Uh, projects, uh, swimming pool, again, we're gonna revisit that in June when we have a live council meeting at the pool. Uh, mayor's court uh, ties into the council chambers and I know they're working on that still and utility building. Colleen said sent me stuff this morning, I'm gonna start reviewing. I'm gonna be the council guys here pretty soon. So moving on and moving forward. Um, before we get to the other two uh, topics I, I skipped, I do have an additional discussion topic that I did hand right in. I just want, want, want to let everyone know. On the 22nd, I do believe it's this Friday at 1 p.m., we are having the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Habitat family coming in. This is a crafter family. Um, and this is at 610 West Washington Street. Every ceremony we've had prior to this one has been very heavily attended. So thank you, council members, for coming and showing support. But they're officially moving in and cutting that ceremony, uh, cutting the ribbon on this Friday. So I will be making an appearance. Be glad if we can have a lot of community support for that. And back to the two that I missed. So we have, I have a motion request. The last meeting we had Pete Bells come in and do the uh, council strategy, retreat strategy session. Um, that is well below my monetary authority to enter into a contract without council approval. But since it has to do with city council, I would not sign that without knowing what council wanted to do as a whole. So I need some guidance on how council sees we should move forward with that proposal or not do it. Okay. Same vote for it. Go ahead. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, typically I'm not a big fan of consultants, but in this case, I think what uh, what they would be able to provide for us is something that I think we desperately need as far as helping us find our direction and our uh, plan for the city, especially with the way we have, we're getting ready to grow so that we know for the next 10 years what direction we need to go. Um, I think it would be helpful to schedule that and spend that money and do that. Um, I just, uh, I don't, I'm not optimistic that we could do it in a timely manner. We, we could probably do it could do. collectively, but I don't know that we could do it in a timely manner and really drill down and get a product that's gonna help us move in direction is unified that helps the administration make decisions helps us make decisions and everybody operates more fluidly so i i think it would be a wise thing to spend some money go ahead i i just agree with you guys i mean i really think that it's a great starting point and it's very low cost considering what we're getting i like the idea they're going to um question us individually and then bring all of our ideas together. I think that's going to make a good way to go. Mr. Lindsay. I think we spend six grand someplace else a lot better. So I would be a no vote on that when it comes to no vote. Anyone else? <coughs> I believe we have a motion. No, we don't. I need a motion then to go ahead and accept it for him. I second. Kathy? Second. My second. Okay. Mrs. Wright was our first. Eggleston was the second. You have to accept the comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan. <clears throat> it's a motion to accept. For the, sorry, not interrupt. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Motion to, to have the city manager into a, the agreement with local government consultants for the council strategy session and retreat. I'll get on that. Thank you very much. Um, did you vote Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Accepted five to one. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Council. And moving on to the last discussion, it is the Main Street Curve Study that is attached. I attached it at the last meeting uh, uh, with Council to look at it and then discuss it today when we have our pool administrator staff present. So, any questions for the Main Street Curve Study? Any discussion comments? I think bigger signs are better than no signs or whatever we have out there now. Outside of putting a deputy, I forget the name of that park out there. Is that Hensley? Uh, that nobody ever uses. Uh, outside of parking a, a deputy there, maybe just parking a cruiser there with no deputy yet might slow people down. Right. I know other companies <coughs> have done that. that is Van Day is very good at doing that. That is a very good one. And because uh, they see that car, man, they hit the brakes. Of course, somebody could get hit in their back end because they're too close together, but but uh, that that's an effective way of slowing people down. And maybe the signs will help, but you know they come in here at 35. Unless there's a deputy sitting at uh, what is that water dog out there? Yeah. Uh, they come in through they come in through here at 45, 50 mile an hour, and because uh, a little speed thing there tells me how fast they're going. And I'm thinking, you know, where's a cop at when you need yeah. one? I don't have one in my back pocket. And these guys are at the donut shop. I like the, I like the, I like the police cruiser parking there. I like I'll that idea. Yeah, that. yeah it, uh, I mean, we have. It's a great idea. Don't we have one sitting over here? It's not being used. The car. I'll talk to him about maybe just. I'll figure something out. But yeah, yeah. I like the concept. It's a great yeah. Idea. Just put it. Just sit a car there, and it don't have to be main. And lock it up. Make sure, don't have any weapons or nothing. Like somebody will break into it, no doubt. But. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that does that is effective. I know uh, Van Day does it. I think Oakwood does it too. I think wow. I've seen them down there. A few, few people do it. Yeah. yeah. Tip does it. They got a place over here going into Tip City on 571. I see a car there sitting all the time. Uh, I never see a cop around unless he's down does. facing or something. Donaldsville does it. Donaldsville does. It? Oh, it's always, it's, there. Always, it's always there. They even have a cop. <laughs> they have two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, Mr. Kicker, do you want to add anything to not to put you on the spot? I mean, it's really your wheelhouse. No, I, I think we're going to go with the signs and then uh, we're going to paint that edge line, that white edge line that puts a little bit of guidance there. But all the data, uh, basically the two that I know of, the semi and the, well, one was uh, alcohol, drugs or alcohol were involved and the other one was uh, icy conditions. So both instances were, weren't speed related. Now, I'm not saying there's not, you know, can be a speed issue, but we think with signage and then putting that uh, line in to guide them around, um, I think it'll help out a lot. When we, when we first got this, the study submitted to us, the crash data only went back maybe, what, three or four years, maybe five, and I resubmitted it to go further back, because you want, you want at least 10 years data when you're doing this kind of stuff, because I kind of was thinking, would that change the scope of the project, and it kind of, because the data just wasn't there. But I did, we attempt to kind of look at that from a more, uh, from, a, from a wider range than just the past couple of years to see what truly the cause of my cause. Well, well, I know before we had a deputy that would sit there occasionally at various times of the day. And uh, apparently they wrote quite a few tickets and the word finally got out, people started slowing down. And then. They moved on and then they'd spot sit there and so it, it worked. These crashes, that, and correct me if I'm wrong, most of them are speed and alcohol related, weren't they? Speed and alcohol. I don't was the other one was this? It was drug and alcohol, icy conditions. Well, the report doesn't show the ones that weren't called in. Well, I just saw the tire tracks in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Sure, most likely alcohol. Which was an additional yeah. three or four incidents since 2017. So, well, unfortunately, they look at crash data. So you have to have property damage data when it comes up to that. So that's them just someone going off the road. They're not going to count that unless they hit something. Come right to my front steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to get that data back. I mean, yeah, we tried. It's just 
this I, is what I this is what the, the bigger, data is pointing. With the bigger sign, are we doing three though? The, it said it recommended three. We're, it's enlarging those. Uh, well, it's the three couple more existing, but yeah. they're getting a bigger size. Just bigger. Just yep. And it's I'm, I'm determined or undetermined yet on that left hand arrow, which is a 36 inch by 18 inch sign um, of getting that in as to be an LED version. It's solar. Oh, wow, that would be nice. You know, considering it, um, the speed sign you see up there, that was 1200 bucks for that speed sign. Huge. Yeah, so they're not, the, the thing is, it's not cheap to go that way, but um, that 25 is now LED lit. Um, so I got to price a, a left arrow just to see how much, you know, for this particular place would uh, be. Did any council members, anyone see the news article in Dayton Daily News not too long ago, like last week, about the apartment complex that's on Wayne? If you know where Wayne kind of splits off, there's a massive retirement community up there in the hill, Wilmington Place. Yeah, it's the old Dayton yeah. Hospital, but in Yeah, that. so there's an apartment complex that keeps on getting a car running into it. So the owner got sick because the city was not doing anything. They put these massive, massive landscape holders in the front of the yard. But they're not for crash protection. They're they're um, decoration. They're aesthetic. Pretty. They're, mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes you just take matters in your own hand. There you go, Peg. <laughs> Fire chief suggested that I not do that because it would propel the car. In. No, you think you need to see the size of these boulders? <laughs> Ain't nothing around these things. <laughs> I thought that was a guardrail. So just a light buckle. I just thought it was a, it was a decent article. I just get one building higher. It brings up another point. What's the status on the uh, sign that was down in Hensley Park? There is no status. It's not coming back. That's what the last council decided. You guys, we've already discussed that with your last council. Well, I must have forgotten. It founded in 1810. So we look at doing other things with that. We're going to have more of it. It'll come back, just not in the way it was. So it's just going to take some time. Right. So we're going to clean up all the entrances in town where you got 15 signs coming to the city that says this belongs here, that belongs there. You just need to welcome the city New Carlisle sign. And Hensley's going to be that spot where we have, like, you know, someone wants to get a plaque to put up on like a, you're on the tip city. And you ever been in tip city lately coming in? They got that metal thing. We need to do something like that. But that's down the road. Right. Anything else? Um, yeah, I'm good. Okay, then I guess we move on to committee reports. I don't think we've got any that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And I guess we go to comments from the members of the public. So if you will, back to the podium, state your name. Do you want an address, Ms. Burner? not have to state their address but if they could at least write it on the paper that would be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot Good evening, uh, Matthew Mills, uh, 285 Zeller Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio, uh, in the township, not the city. I'm here tonight as um, your guys' appointed and representative to the Clark County Springfield CTC, formerly known as JVS. Some of you may know this, but we have a levy on the ballot tomorrow. Um, and this is kind of like the last hurrah of making sure people know that it's there, what it is, and if you guys have any questions, in case your own constituents have them, you might be able to answer them. Um, so real quick, CTC, if you aren't familiar with how it's organized, the eight public schools in Clark County, Tecumseh being one of them, all are appointed. There's somebody within the district that's appointed by the school board of those eight bodies. Springfield gets two, everyone else gets one, so there's nine uh, school board members. Um, the buildings at CTC in Springfield are very old. Most of them are from the early 60s through the 70s. Um, and I believe that there, there are six, if not seven, of those buildings to where you have to go into each different one. And there's an elevation change across campus of over 50 feet. 
So the buildings themselves are aging a lot harder to maintain, a lot more expensive to maintain, and security is a big factor. I don't know if you guys heard about the um, tragic shooting in Springfield that occurred yesterday. CTC and Springfield schools both shut down. CTC's main reason was security because they had six to seven buildings that you can get in and out of. Um, so no school today because of that. Um, so the school was approached by the state of Ohio and we have the ability to put a levy on the ballot to get brand new schools. Um, this is the second to last chance that they have. If they don't pass it tomorrow, then we have one more chance to pass it in November. After that, the money goes away to another CTC school, another career technical college, or not college, a center for, these aren't college kids, these are 16, 17, 18 year old kids. Um, so the state's gonna spend the money, we should spend it here. Um, Tecumseh, which is um, this side of the county, uh, has 20% of the total student body at CTC, so we have a big representation there. Um, here's some more numbers on CTC. So this year alone, 786 students across the county applied. 109 of them did not qualify and 176 got put on a waiting list. That means out of 786 students who want to go, these are students who want to enter the workforce after college, only 500 of them got in. So what is that? Uh, eight, three fifths? around that. So there's a lot more kids that want to go. We just can't house them because we don't have the room. Classroom sizes are too small. So if this levy were to pass, we could add up to, not up to, but well over 100 additional students as well as additional programs. Um, I'm not going to read all the programs to you, but here's a, a couple carpentry, electrical, HVAC, welding, um, criminal justice, culinary, um, BOAG, uh, forestry, uh, uh, it goes on and on and on and on and on. To give you an example of some more numbers, 24, 47 students applied for carpentry, 24 got accepted. 54 for electrical, 20 got accepted. 13 for HVAC, they had, a, they had some flex in there, so because they can accept up to 20. And then welding, 52 applied, 23 got accepted. There is a lottery system for CTC because there's not enough classes. So you have to get accepted, get put on a lottery to say this is my first choice. You might not get it. And if you don't get it, then you get put into another program of your second and third and fourth choices. So um, we need the space. We need the new schools, um, safety. So a little bit of information on the, on the levy. It's a 1.4 mil property tax on $100,000 worth of valuation. So what that means is if you, if the county appraised your house at $100,000, not what you bought it for, the county appraised it for that, it would cost you on, it cost you $49 a year. So about four, 10, 409 a month. That scales, so if you have a $200,000 home that appraised, not what you bought it for, but appraised, that goes up to eight, and then 12, and then so on. So relatively economical in terms of um, getting these brand new schools the state's going to pay for up to 40 percent of that so it's a good split and it's not just here it's the entire county that has to pay for it um, that's really all i have um, again it's tomorrow i encourage you guys all to go out and vote in the affirmative um, and if any of your constituents have any um, questions or that hopefully you guys can take this information and, and share it with them um, I know my time's up, but I'd be happy to entertain any questions if you guys have any. Does anybody get a question for Matt? Matt, I thank you very much for your input on this. And I think each and every one of the, our citizens that have kind of looked at your stuff on Facebook really appreciates the fact of what you've tried to do to enlighten them. Appreciate and that. I thank you for your effort. Thank you. With that, anybody else? Chief. Just Go ahead, Chief. To comment one thing on the C on CTC program. Uh, two years ago, I hired two kids straight out of CTC. Uh, they weren't in Clark County. They were in the same, but basically the same type of school. System. I didn't see them. Same thing. Two of them. They were the best two hires I've hired, and they're both now working as full-time firefighter medics. Awesome. Uh, Huber. So. It's very much worth it. 
And I know Clark County does have the EMP mm -hmm. campus program. I did mention them to the fire, by the way, so they're going to look into that. The, the want is there. Yeah. I mean, the, the want is there for kids. College isn't for everybody. Some, some of these kids want to go right in the workforce, and they can make a lot more money than a lot of college-educated kids can. And this is a great way for it to happen. One of the things that we're seeing a lack of is interest in water and wastewater services. Is that something that CTC should maybe look at and see if there's a need? We have talked with um, Clark State. We have, we're going to be starting our own programs, the stuff like this, for the exposure. Um, and then, two, we had talked earlier about this expands past Clark County. What can you tell me about if someone who's watching lives in Greene County, they're still able to vote in this? It, it's very um, minimal because the way that public schools work, um, some of the public school boundaries go across county lines. Okay. And so there may be some Greene County residents that would go to Greedon or um, Clifton's not the one over there, Southeastern or Shawnee, mm -hmm. um, kind of those Southern um, public schools that border Green County, there may be some residents that would be serviced by those public schools. Gotcha. And that would be the ones. It's like um, Pike County, even though some, some of those have to vote in Tecumseh levies, they are also in your city, even though historically they would probably go to Northwestern and there's also some Miami County residents that vote on Tecumseh levies as well. Great. So it's just where that boundary actually is at. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Appreciate it. I appreciate everybody's time and everybody have a great evening and get out and vote. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? If not, I guess we'll go to the uh, resolutions and ordinance section, Ms. Werner. That resolution 2024-04R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution accepting the official certificate of estimated resources for 2024, along with the tax year 2024 rates and amounts, certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. So moved. Second. 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 Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, explanation of this uh, resolution. This is a yearly housekeeping uh, resolution that we do. Um, we're in front of council tonight for approval. Are there any discussion? <clears throat> if not, Ms. Burner. Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. Zero. Moving on to our ordinances, we have ordinance 2024-07. This was introduced on February 20th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for IT and compliance services. That's the one that's been tabled, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have to make a motion to table it? We did last week. Yeah. Probably. So if you want to do it again, go ahead. To table ordinance 2024 07. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Uh, yes. Ma'am? Discussion? I'd like to amend the ordinance to uh, not only table it, but to amend it to when the manager has. The information back, and then he brings it back to us, so we don't have to keep doing this every two weeks. Hopefully, we have it ready for next week or in two weeks. But if it isn't, we don't have to do it. He, he already has it. Does that make sense? Uh, or was I caught the last? We're going. Vice Mayor made a motion to table it. Yes, sir. I want to amend it to where it stays tabled until you have all the oh, information okay. and then bring it back to us Makes in case you don't have it in two weeks. That way we don't have to keep kicking this football down the road. Okay. Thank you. Do I get a second on that amendment? Second. 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 Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. 
Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Acceptance to amend it. <clears throat> now I still need to vote on table. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and second was Shammy. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lee. Yes. Vice Mayor Ace. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Here. Moving on to Ordinance 2024-11, introduced on March 4th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending Ordinance 2023-52 for the purpose of correcting a scrivener's error. So moved. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. <coughs> uh, this was uh, passed, I do believe, in 2022. Um, when we assigned the number of 1460.43, uh, the codes were not updated online, so it resulted in um, numbering had to be reamended once we realized we had already assigned that number. We're basically just reassigning a number. Any questions for discussion? Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. This is 6 0. <clears throat> Ordinance 2024 12 introduced on March 4th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance to approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances to provide for the adoption of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances, to provide for the publication of such new matter, and to repeal ordinances in conflict therewith. So moved. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is a, another uh, housekeeping ordinance we do. Uh, every uh, year or so I submit all the code changes that council done that impacts our codified ordinances. We send them to American Legal Publishing. They uh, update those codes and we get this nice little printout. This is the changes they've made. Council has to approve those changes. Any further? Councilman Wright? Um, yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That's a 6 0. <clears throat> the next three are read only. Ordinance 2024 13. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on April 1st, 24. An ordinance authorizing the sale by internet auction of city owned personal property which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired. Ordinance 2024 14, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on April 1st, 24. An ordinance authorizing an expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the paving and striping of the Heritage Hall and Hensley Park parking areas. Ordinance 2024 15, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on April 4th. Okay. Is this? Yeah, that's all that's correct. Okay. An ordinance amending chapter 1244 of the City of New Carlisle's Planning and Zoning Code. Other business, we have additional city business. The key to the city presentation to former, Mike May, former Mayor Mike Lowry is Monday, April 1st, 2024, during the city council meeting here at Smith Park Shelter House. At, that starts at 6 p.m. Council will have coffee and donuts on Saturday, April 13th at Heritage Hall from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and is now <clears throat> open for discussion on city-related business. I need a motion to excuse Mr. Grimm. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I did have one question. I, I wasn't sure where to ask it at. We're on motion. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. The excusing. Oh. You're fine. Oh, yes. Of um, a second was the egg was Eggleston? Okay. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Motion to excuse accepted 6 0. Uh, the question I had was I think um, a house or a garage has been torn down on, um, what is that, Dayton? What's that road? Be across the street from the grocery store. 
Dayton, Dayton Brand. Okay. Is that where the road is going through to the shopping McDonald's and all that? No, that was just Mr. Hensley tearing down the That was just him tearing down his thing. Do we have a plan to dead end that road and get rid of that that silly Y, especially with that big plaque coming? Yes. Do we do have a plan for that? I was wondering, is that available so we can see it or is it's on it our just... web page, it's been it's been everywhere. It's on our city web page, it's been up there for months. All that's so where the <coughs> road's going through? And yeah. the dead end's coming? Oh my, I did not see that. That that section from where the road uh, connects on behind Shroy <coughs> there will be, as I understood it, would be abandoned. I, I the, the Addison is going to be beat off, or bees is going to be abandoned, yes. Good. The exact specifics we don't know yet. It's okay. a, almost like a concept. They'll run some more probably final stuff when it comes to that. But it's, yeah, that's been. There's a whole part of the traffic study we did uh, before we even voted the developments in. Wow, <coughs> I missed that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it was like 2022, 20, maybe even. Oh, gosh. 21. How are you want to get in on this? No, it was at 21. And 21. If I may, uh, we're awaiting a report uh, that finalizes that yeah. traffic study. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's all been taken care of. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to hear it. Anybody have anything else? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, last meeting, we was talking about the, the letter that Mr. Grimm had added to the minutes from February about a gentleman who got a ticket because he parked too close to his own car in front of his house. And <clears throat> the state law says that, and the city ordinances follow state law on pretty much all the state regulations. However, if council so desires or would choose, they can eliminate that law. Like I said two weeks ago, I thought it was silly that the guy got a ticket for parking two of his own vehicles together. And the manager said we could make a motion to eliminate that. I did not do it last meeting. The, uh, but if council would like to do that, I'll make the motion if somebody wants to second it to eliminate that, that uh, part of the ordinance. <clears throat> Go ahead, man. We'll have to draft an ordinance to amend. Okay. If that's what council wants to do. And then we'll have Jake look at the legality of that, because I did not say you could do that. So we can look, have a motion to have us look into it. The, so we can do that, but I highly encourage council to, again, with having no backing research, it's just copy state code. So what we're going to do if we change it is, make it really complicated for the guys down there who are issuing the ticket because now they have to check the car in front of it. Well, they could just sure ignore the, the two cars there. sitting together. What if it's not? Then it's going to cause confusion. You know, what if it's someone from out of state who is just visiting that house? So, you know, um, there's a reason why I said don't do anything then because I'm pretty sure, since it's under the 400s, most of that's a copy and paste from state code. So us being a charter municipality, it's something we'll have Jake look into. Uh, I'm sure we can, uh, but I would just stress the importance of being it. home rule. We can sure. do less than the state law, but we cannot do more than the state law. So that particular section of the code can be eliminated by this council if they so yeah. desire sure. to do that. But there's consequences for doing stuff like that. There's consequences to everything, but I think it's it's uh, the the deputies has more things to do in my opinion than go around and looking at bumpers and measuring to make sure they're 12 inches apart. city council passed the bond <clears throat> schedule for the mayor's court exactly for i understand that and so. anything that this council or previous councils has done can be undone by a council this one or future let me interject this if council were to I guess the word is take that ordinance out of play as far as the city codes are to be enforced. What would keep the deputy from applying the state code? Absolutely nothing. So consequently, we've now got a conflict of interest. 
No, you don't have a conflict of interest. They're just tied under the state code, and that's going to go to the county and say Ohio. Posted. Right, he would go to the county, but it still could be enforced. It still could be, yes. And that might be an appropriate way because I still want the law in effect for like on Main Street. If I don't want somebody on my bed on here and then on the <coughs> front here, that's what I think the law is written for for straightaways where they're parked right. You know, you don't want blocked in into your square parking. But I think that we might ought to revise it for a neighborhood situation where it is a, a driveway, park, park, driveway, because both of those cars can get out when it's like that, no matter what. I mean, you can back out or you can go forward. You're not going to be trapped in. And if they are touching, <clears throat> even if they're your neighbor's car and your car, uh, that's up to you and your neighbor, you know. If it's your own car, it's whatever, that's fine. I don't know, I, I can see some use in that. The, uh, to, to Kathy's comment about uptown, those parking spots are lined. Unless you got a really big car, the cars nowadays aren't, I mean, my truck don't even go from line to line, and, and I got a crew cab. The, uh, so they have, as far as the parking downtown, they have plenty of park or space to where I hate to say this, but if you can't drive, you're not going to get the car in there in the first place. But if you if you get it in there, you'll be able to get it out without hitting the one in front of you or behind you. I think this what I'm talking about is is like you said in the plaps between driveway and driveway. If you got two two cars, or if they're small, you got three cars. Somebody can move a car, or they can back out or whatever. You know, I, I just think it's a, a little ridiculous that a citizen gets a ticket and in that situation if i remember correctly both those vehicles belong to him so if he wants to hit his bumpers together that's his business not the government's not the nobody's business okay so let me ask and, you and 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 before i finish then i'll let you have it the manager also said last meeting and, and correct me if i got it completely wrong i don't think i do but it may be uh <clears throat> that uh and it goes back to the retreat also with uh i forget the gentleman's name uh, pete yeah yes, thank you pete. you know that we are the governing body of the city not the administration we are to tell the administration what we want done not them tell us what we need to do and he said that, if I'm not correcting. Did you not say that? Did I, I might have missed a word or two, but that's pretty much the gist of what was said. So, again, in this case, we need to refer to council members, listen to what the manager has to say, but don't ask for advice from the manager well, actually, on, on certain things. I'm your key policy advisor. <clears throat> I understand I would, that. I would, I would definitely be asking my advice on this kind of stuff because I have a little more inside. But, count, but council still can do, 100%. Can, can change Absolutely. any ordinance they want, this one or future council. Absolutely. Can change anything or, or we can do anything that the previous council has done all the way back to the inception of the city. Sure. <clears throat> so, let me add, Mr. Bridge. Let me ask one question. How many tickets have been written in regard to this particular situation? I, I don't know. I don't have the data. Not a lot. And my comment was no disrespect, but why are we creating solutions to non-existent problems? Someone told me that a couple years ago, and it's kind of stuck with me. Um, probably two or three, I'm guessing, um, is my two, understanding of it. Two uh, or three. Uh, two and or three. Um, here's another <laughs> thing. If Mr. Lindsay wants to do it, that's great, and that's that's exactly how council is supposed to be handling this relationship. He's now it right on the head. I'd be love to work with you and draft your legislation as our code states. You have to put your name on it, and then council. I got a problem for it's, it's that simple. But he he's he's to the point, and that's I've said to other people. You guys let this administration make way too many of your decisions, and it's got to stop. But that's exactly how you do it through the legislative process. Me as your key policy advisor, I'm going to sit there and say. Why is it an issue now when it's never been an issue before? We're going to change local code. State code's still going to change, so there's still site under it. It's going to go out. Um, we're creating, no, it's not really a, a city-wide issue. I think we should take these guys and get their opinion on it, because they're the ones who have to do our work. And we're creating more work to be done, um, especially if we get an apprentice. If someone tries to force their car in there, 
How, they're, how are we going to make sure that they're not just a little bit over into someone else's apron so now this person can't back out of their house? So I'm saying these laws are in there for a, for a purpose. Um, it doesn't mean you guys can't change it. Doesn't mean that at all. But state code will still be able to be in this situation. But Mr. Lindsay's right. This is exactly how it's supposed to be done. And I commend you for doing it the right way. I, and everything I said tonight about this, I never said anything about encroaching on somebody else's driveway because our state law, and I'm assuming our ordinances also says, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, because they, they should know or may know, I believe you, the closest to a driveway you can park is three foot. If you're more than three foot, it makes it hard for a car in the driveway, especially a pickup truck, to get out. Yeah. You ever heard of I mean, you can you can do it if you know how to drive. You know, there'll be people who are out here who do it right, and there'll be people out there that you know, give it to take a mile. You know, so I it's it's if it's on the books, it's still going to be on the books through state code. So we can let it go locally, but again, it's there for a reason because I think it has it, it, every action has a reaction, and we just try to get two cars in there. It's going to have a ripple effect of what's going on behind it. That's all. But I, but you never know unless you trial and error. But I think any ordinances that we do within this city those are the ordinances deputies need to be enforcing and if a state trooper comes by he can do the state code but you also have to understand too you're in a city so when you choose to live in the city you kind of give up certain things because you live in a city you know so what's next so we're going to sit there and say your grass can be 24 inches tall Maybe. instead of six Depends if my mower quits around or not. <laughs> so, like, so that's just where it is. But we're here to do whatever council does. If Mr. <clears throat> you want to give me a call, we'll be happy to draft the legislation with you. I need a I need a second on my motion even to get the ordinance written. You do not need that. I you will. can withdraw the motion. It says, in your, it says in the rules of council, each if you're a council member, you want to draft legislation, you draft it, you work with me and Jake, you put your name on it, you're done. You do not need a motion to give other uh, to, for council to bring in. Um, before we I know I'm old and I forget a lot of things. <laughs> Bill, you're out of order. Before we move forward, I would like to hear from council whether they want to see the administration move forward to change this ordinance. Bill is still waiting on a second for that motion. Do you two gentlemen have any input? Well, considering in front of my house, I have this X amount of feet, and there's been times where I have to pull up to my other vehicle because I don't have much room, and I'm not going to park in front of the neighbor's house either. We all have our own little thing going on. So, again, I, I think it's a silly rule, and uh, that's my opinion. Mr. Bond. I'm fine with changing it, and if it gets to be a problem, we can change it back. If it gets to be a problem, is that yeah. okay? That's right. We have two big plots coming in that have small frontages, and I'm sure they're going to have big trucks just like we do in Willowick and, and Northwood. I do <coughs> think we need to allow for, you know, they, they work their businesses. They have to park those trucks somewhere. And I mean, I don't want to look at them, and I think that's probably where the law came from. But yeah, I really think we should do it. Second, Jim. Second, I tried Second. to a minute ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you want to chime in on this, Peg? No, I don't think. I guess we got a motion and a second. Okay, what's the motion for? I I thought to I was do, under the impression we. Well, the motion do. is this motion. Because if, I started to say it earlier, but I thought we made a, a few years ago, made it to where you can, a council member cannot write a, go and have a ordinance written without the consent of council. That's why I made the motion. There was proclamation. That's what, what we're after here. What is your motion, Bill? To, well, at this point, I don't even know. Uh, to to do away with the and I don't have the the code number in front of me it's on my desk to do away with the parking 
within a foot of each other in front of your own house. Can I add something to this too? Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. Um, that's going to be costly because now I have to get all new parking tickets and we just got them in the mail. It took around, I would say around 15 weeks to get them in. So there will be no parking tickets being issued until we get new ones because I can't have a fictitious charge on a parking ticket. So I'm just saying that's those are some of the things we have to take into account. Just giving it them, hasn't passed yet. We well, still have to write the ordinance. It's effective. I have to pull those parking ticket book and just order new ones. So I'm just letting you know. Right. If you guys see a lapse of parking citations, that's why. I'm just letting they just write more parking tickets so we can get through those a lot quicker. No. Yeah, <laughs> they could do that. <laughs> Did you just say that on film? <laughs> he can say that. <clears throat> But I just want council to know that's if it does pass. That wouldn't take we, but a week or so, right? It to took order. 15, 15 weeks to get them in the first. Did it time. really? Yeah, that is. Well, but again, it is. it'd be a grace period then for our folks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got that down, Mrs. Burner? I think so. I do want to make a note when you very first started the conversation, it was not the letter that was added to the minutes had nothing to do with this. It was a letter that was received. Oh, I know. Right, 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 right. Okay. It had nothing to do. It had nothing to it do with this parking. It was Dale's the letter. Of yeah. We, we I brought it up. When first started talking, you said the. I thought I thought that letter that, that no, he uh, about, got from somebody that got a ticket because I they think bumped the record. That was just something he had mentioned. Okay. What he well, had me add to okay. the minutes was the letter about the naming of Heritage Hall. I wanted okay. that to be clear. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, so please do not take it like this. I advise you guys to look at the rest of that section and the parking ticket to find out if you're going to take anything else off before I order new ones. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And while you're at it, just look at all your serious property maintenance codes. Because we I think have, we should I'm just, not trying to be, we have just get rid of all the property maintenance codes. If and, you want to make a motion you know. to that, let me know. I mean, if we're, we're, at that, we're at that point. Let's just scrap all of them. That's let people do what they want, let them be free. I think you got a motion. So you, to to you guys want to take that massive right? component off my plate? By all means, take them off. Ready to call for it? Go. All right. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. That passes four to two. Anything else before we adjourn? No. Um, to adjourn. Bill, could Second. we um, all get that a copy of that, or I don't know, What's that so copy? we can all look at all the codes? Well, Maybe on, there they're, are. They're online. All right, but I, I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to see. Them. Yeah, they're online. Okay. Go to the city website and you'll find right. codified ordinances. Who's the that's also going to have a ripple effect in revenue in your mayor's court. Right. Let's give you the full spectrum of it. Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn? Yeah, I got somebody. Ready? Oh, Thank you, Mr. Motion. Mm -hmm. Did motion you motion to adjourn? Then I, I did. Oh, I'm second. I didn't know the motion on the floor. Shammy's the second. Shammy's the second. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't hear. Are you hearing me? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shane? Yes. Motion to adjourn except at 16.